Uh, I am the director of the Human Internet and American Life Project, which is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that looks at the social impact of the internet. And I, for my money, one of the most underreported and un understood things that's happened to the online environment since our project came into being in the year 2000 is the changing demographics of the online population and the changing usage patterns and changing sort of cultural situation that exists online thanks to uh, that uh, those changes. So here I'm going to run through data just for the, the life of the project. We did our first survey in March 2000 when the data out of the reporting line came from a survey that was completed in December of 2008 in most cases. But just to show you the changing uh, pattern of participation in population, in 2000 we saw that 40% of, of baby boomers used the internet, fewer than 5% had broadband at home, and those who did paid incredible sums to have it available to them. About a third of baby boomers had cell phones. We didn't even ask the question about when you connected uh, uh, to the internet cloud because it wouldn't, didn't even occur to us uh, and wireless connections weren't an option in those days. So we, I'm putting zero in there as a placeholder. Nobody uh, uh, connected wirelessly. And I'm guessing that a very small portion of baby boomers had webmail accounts or something like that. A Gmail, not even Gmail, what did you use? A Hotmail account or a Yahoo account or something like that. Nowadays, uh, three quarters of baby boomers use the internet. 62% have broadband at home. Broadband changes everything. It moves the internet from a sort of novelty in your life to a central utility and appliance and, and functional device in your life. Uh, almost three quarters have a cell phone. 43% uh, connect wirelessly, not and, and in two ways: through their wireless connection, through their laptops, and through their cell phones. That number adds up both of those populations. And 47%, almost half of baby boomers now use some kind of cloud function. So we've moved from an environment where at the dawn of the project, uh, uh, computer connections were slow, stationary connections that were built around, you know, my computer, my device, to an environment now for all computing, but especially for baby boomers as well, fast mobile connections that are moving outside to outside servers and storage so that people can connect through any device that, that, that locks into the internet and changes the way they think about information available to them as well as people available to them. Uh, also, the, the, the sort of total composition of the um, of the internet population has changed, skewing towards baby boomers and older Americans. In 2000, when we did our work, about 28% of the internet population uh, was baby boomers, and on any given day, about 24% of the traffic was driven by people who are in the baby boomer cohort. By 2008, that the numbers have grown to 36 percent of the online population at large of American adults now are baby boomers, and on any given day, about a third of those who are using the internet um, are baby boomers. To get that daily number a little bit more clarity, in, in the year 2000, about a quarter of baby boomers said they were using the internet on any given day. Now more than half yeah, are using it on any given day. Um, a fewer than five percent were saying that they were getting on uh, the internet more multiple times a day. Now we see that more than a third are getting on multiple times a day. About a fifth in that uh, in that early days of the project uh, went online uh, just for fun. You know, the internet was a destination just because you could uh, kill a few uh, idle hours there or have some. Um, diversion there, now that number has grown to over 41%. The internet, thanks to broadband, thanks to wireless, has become a way that people abuse themselves, kill some time, and stuff like that. It's embedded more deeply in the rhythms of their life. In 2002, we don't have 2000 data on a lot of this stuff because uh, we weren't asking these questions then, but in 2002, we could measure the change in the value that the internet and cell phones have to people uh, by looking at the changes in this question. We asked, would it be very hard to give up uh, a variety of pieces of technology in your life? And in 2002, about a third of baby boomers said it would be very hard to give up the internet, and a third said it would be very hard to give up their cell phone. Well, by 2007, when we asked that same question, those numbers had uh, grown to 42% who said it would be very hard to give up the internet, and 46% who said it would be very hard to give up uh, their cell phone. This is our version of the data that you, you were seeing uh, from, from the AARP. We find the baby boomers in all of these categories are exactly like everybody else online. The internet environment is not a wholly owned subsidiary of Gen Y. As a matter of fact, it's the one thing that's, tr that's true about sort of looking at the way people use the internet and, and changes or differences between generations is that they are very much related to lifestyle changes. Um, if, if baby boomers are in a slightly different life circumstance than Gen Y people are, and that explains a lot of the difference of the way they use the internet compared to Gen Y people, but 
They use it more intensively in those areas that make a connection directly to their life and the circumstances that they find themselves. Using email, they're doing online readings and stuff like that. And here's the here's the uh, the e-commerce picture that we get for them. They are obviously doing a tremendous amount of research online. They're often um, doing the research and then close. Networking question on this. I think there's a caveat to, to start this conversation with because boomers are social networkers par excellence. They don't necessarily experience is that my colleagues in, in the baby boomer and fanatic listserv users, more so than younger Americans. So when you're talking about social networking, sharing information, finding out what your friends are doing, they have lots of different tools, not just profiles on Facebook and MySpace and other social networking sites. But th this is the portrait that we get of, uh, of baby boomers and, and social networking. They use video sharing sites, they read blogs. Only about 7% are bloggers, but again, blogging is so hard to talk about nowadays. I think that doesn't represent the number of people who are doing something blog-like in this country. Thanks.